we had the chance to go hands-on with a vertical slice of Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. And if you've been waiting for this game with anticipation, well my friends, you're going to be extremely happy. My name is Livid, this is Legacy Gaming, and after dozens of hours with a special preview build, we're sharing our thoughts on Space Marine 2. Now to start, I want to thank Focus Entertainment for the chance to play this special build of the game early. Kodiak, myself, and our buddy Tragic had the chance to play through a full level of the campaign, as well as two operations that we can run as many times as we'd like. We also got to try out all six available Space Marine classes, as well as explore the progression and customization systems that, up until this point, have been largely a mystery. We're not going to spend a lot of time breaking down the mechanics of each system because we already did that in our Ultimate Preview video released the other day. And if you haven't seen that, check it out because it's the most comprehensive breakdown of Space Marine 2 out there. Now instead, we're going to talk about the gameplay experience, and if Space Marine 2 at this point is worth checking out. And with that in mind, let's dive in. We're going to focus squarely on the gameplay experience, because the moment-to-moment -moment action is what has so far sold us on the game. Now you play as a Space Marine, either as Titus in campaign mode, or your own customizable Astartes in Operations or Eternal War. Now, no matter what game mode, you're still taking control of a Space Marine. And let me tell you, these guys are lore accurate heavy. You feel the weightiness of their movement and actions almost immediately. And that's something you can't really assess until you go hands on yourself. Space Marines are, to put it lightly, walking tanks. And their lack of mobility is a huge factor in how you play the game. The team does a nice job balancing this by making you extremely resilient and the armor system in the game is the perfect complement for that lack of speed. Now your armor is almost like a secondary health bar and as enemies hit you, you'll lose a portion of your armor until eventually your health pool is exposed. The classes designed for the front lines often have more total armor nodes while others have less. It's a dynamic that you have to account for constantly and it's really well implemented. The armor system only works because of another set of systems, counters and executions. At a base level, whenever an enemy uses a targeted special attack, a blue or red warning indicator will flash on the screen. Red attacks have to be dodged, but blue attacks can be directly parried, countered, or perfectly dodged. Now these make for some of the most cinematic and brutal takedowns in the game, but they also restore an armor tick each time, so it's an essential system to master. Likewise, if you perfect dodge an enemy attack, whether that be a red, blue, or a non-telegraphed attack, you'll see a targeting reticle appear near their head. Pull the trigger, and you'll perform a counter shot, which kills or seriously damages an enemy while also restoring some armor. These two systems make your physical heaviness a true non-issue, and helps keep the action fast-paced while elevating the overall skill ceiling of the game. It's less about how fast you can run and clear areas, and more about how efficiently you can cut down the wave of enemies you're confronted with. Ammo and grenade conservation is truly a thing at higher difficulties. So being able to cut through tougher enemies using your sheer strength is something everyone will need to master. And it feels damn good when you pull off a difficult encounter with a flourish. Now I do want to point out, however, that during our time with this earlier build, these systems and controls didn't always work as intended. But that's because of a slightly larger issue. Throughout our time with the preview, it was clear that sometimes inputs would simply not register, and it's something that we're hoping the team has shored up for the final build of the game. Now this disrupted almost all core combat systems at one point or another, and we noticed it just often enough to call attention to it in this preview. Now, can it be addressed? Absolutely, but it's something we just wanted to point out just in case it isn't. Now of course, it's not all just parries and dodges. At the heart of the gameplay experience are the weapons, and nobody, Saber Interactive, nails the execution. <laughs> Depending on your class, you'll have access to a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, and a melee weapon. Now we're talking fan favorites like bolters, plasma pistols, thunder hammers, and meltas. There's a decent selection of weapons across the three categories at launch. And with so much 40k lore to tap into, we could easily see more coming after launch. Some weapons are unique to specific classes, which really helps each of the six classes feel recognizable. For example, the Bulwark, which carries a shield at all times, is the only class to have access to the power sword at this time. 
another notable weapon from 40k lore. Some weapons, such as the Bolter and Bolt Carbine, have a whole host of variations, and while they aren't quite as memorable as the more standout weapons, they all serve their purpose once diving into their respective skill trees. Now when weapons and the combat mechanics all come together, the action is superb. And if you're playing with a full squad of three, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is exhilarating. You're a space marine, so by definition, you're a walking force of nature, but the difficulty is still there. Saber's proprietary tech allows hundreds of Tyranids to swarm at you at any given time. Mix in some warrior type enemies as well as some special elites, and you're in for an actual battle time and time again. Now we of course know that chaos enemies are in the game at this point, and they present themselves much differently than the Tyranid faction. Now that's all I'll say at this point, because we don't really want to spoil any surprises. But I will say this, brace yourself. The classes themselves are fun to use, and we're willing to put money on players calling some classes weak based on their initial impressions. But once you truly progress a class like the Sniper and understand its nuances, everything across the board feels extremely well-tuned. It's a fantastic starting point with plenty of room for expansion in the future. Now each class comes with a unique active skill, as well as an array of weapons, some of which can only be equipped, as we mentioned before, by one class. The class's identity is determined by its skill, but the weapons and perk tree synergies help round out that complete picture, and while all of them are solid, some classes are simply just better suited for galactic war, especially while playing in co-op. Classes like the Bulwark, which can drop a banner that restores armor to your squad within the radius, adds incredible utility to your team, while classes like the Sniper are more designed to find those niche opportunities to eliminate high priority threats before they become an issue. Now each class evolves with the introduction of perks, and you better believe we'll have some future videos diving into each class in detail. So be sure to subscribe if you want those videos in your feed. Where you really notice the class disparity is when your squad is filled with a bot or two. Now straight up, the AI is not great depending on the bot's class. And because you don't really have the ability to choose your bot partner, your experience might be vastly different. Some bots, like the Bulwark or Vanguard, add about as much value as you'd expect from a bot while other classes, like a bot sniper, are next to useless, especially at the harder difficulty. What would be great is for players to be able to select the class of their bot allies, but at this point, that's not the case, and it seems like something the team could easily rectify in the future. Now, where we think Space Marine 2 has the most to gain, and subsequently lose long-term, is with its progression systems. Your class levels up, and so do your guns, but as with every system that sees you getting stronger, it's important to make that a system players enjoy. What I truly fear is that the game played it a bit too safe in this department. Leveling up your class grants you perk points, and that perk tree is decent, offering players 24 total perks, and forcing them to make decisions which will ultimately amount to a build. Now, perks are a bit too passive in my opinion, but the variety does offer a real choice. As always, myself and Kodiak both prefer perks that intentionally change and manipulate gameplay in substantial ways and we'll hand it to the team. There are some in there that do do that. Flat increases to damage or reduction in recoil is nice and all, but if you actually change the way my character functions, well, I'm sold. Each gun also has its own independent perk tree, and while this attempts to accomplish the same thing as the class leveling system, it's a lot more shallow and doesn't often offer any real meaningful choices. Some weapons do, often in the melee category, but by and large, it's a lot of passive stat increases. Upgrading weapons is also a serious investment, so there's a level of commitment to the weapons that does discourage experimentation just a bit. Now to be clear, I don't dislike these systems. They just leave a lot to be desired, especially the gun perk tree system. If the perks allowed us to change foundational aspects about the weapon, thus changing its playstyle, we'd be much more on board with this system. But right now it's so subtle in most instances that the weapon largely feels the same regardless of your choices. Now where the game does get some serious kudos is with its visual customization. Now I've never been one to really care too much about what my character looks like, but Space Marine 2 just makes the experience so great it's hard not to get sucked in. With tons of patterns, colors, emblems, and ornamentations, you can create a Space Marine that not only is badass, but looks the part as well. You can make them as lore accurate or fan designed as you want, and we think that's incredibly important within the 40k community. Now I love this system, and while the interface is a bit confusing, being able to individually tweak pieces of armor is awesome, and it only gets better as you unlock more and more options.
To say we're impressed with Space Marine 2 at this point would be an understatement. We're confident that this game is going to resonate with tons of players, and not just those that are entrenched in the 40k universe. The gameplay is rock solid. The performance, by and large, was great. And with access to more of the game in the future, we're confident that the core ideas that make this game what it is are going to win over fans. The future of Space Marine 2 really depends on a few things. First, is there the ability to react to community feedback? We've identified a few things that were buggy or needed refinement, and once the broader community gets involved, it'll be imperative for Saber to react quickly to that feedback and address it. Because the game is planning on operating as a somewhat live service experience, the team will also need to communicate clearly and relatively quickly about new content. And we've seen with other games like Helldivers 2 how small that window of success really is. And if the team can capitalize on that with plans for weapons, new operations, and even classes, Space Marine 2 has the potential to be in the zeitgeist for some time. And we love almost everything about our experience with the game so far, and we can't wait for everyone to get a chance to play on September 9th. Of course, we'll have a full review up on the channel ahead of launch, so keep it right here and never miss a thing. My name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.